first video, we'll go ahead and go through the process for how to install and set up Mythic. This isn't too bad of a process, but the first thing you need to do is git clone Mythic itself on GitHub. Okay, now in Mythic, there's a lot of different helper scripts here, a lot of different things going on. The main configuration that you're going to do for Mythic lives within the Mythic Docker container. So we'll go ahead and look at that now. This is just a JSON file that's easy to edit. This has a lot of different fields in here that you can modify for however you want to configure your initial setup. You can set the default admin user. By default, this will be Mythic admin and that user's password, Mythic password. You can set the default operation name to be whatever it is that you want. What port you want to listen on. By default, Mythic will use port 7443. And it will generate two self-signed certificates to be able to use with this to do SSL. Uh, as you can see here, you also need to set use SSL to true because since you can modify the port to be whatever it is that you want, you can modify and say whether or not you actually want to use these self-signed certs or not on whatever port you specify. The allowed IP blocks will block or allow IPs from accessing certain pages. So these pages are the login page, the register page, and the ability to download payloads. So if you allow a uh, CIDR notation in here, make sure that it's one that you're willing to um, allow to hit the login, register, or payload downloads. Server header is just a little field you can configure to try and blend in a little bit more or not look like a mythic web server. The web log size is how big you want to actually accrue these uh, web requests. And if you actually want to keep them or not, you can specify true. The seam log name is if you actually want to write out seam specific JSON data to a file. Uh, if you don't specify a file here, nothing will be written to disk. If you do specify a file here, that data will be written out for you that you can then pick up with FileBeat or some other software to use to send off to a seam to aggregate in. Here you'll see two other interesting fields, excluded C2 profiles and excluded payload types. So if there are C2 profiles and payload types set up here in the default mythic that maybe you don't want to start. So maybe for example, you're doing a Mac and Linux operation and you don't need a Windows payload, you can go ahead and include here in the excluded payload types the Atlas payload because that one is Windows only. So that helps up a little bit of space, a little bit of time in standing everything up, but it's completely optional. The last two things here relate to specific documentation. Mythic has an entire Docker container dedicated just to documentation for all the different payload types, all the different C2 profiles, all the different wrappers, and all this stuff, how it kind of fits together. So you can specify whether you want that to be built or not. That's just a basic Hugo static web server. And you can specify whatever port you want to use here. So these are all the default values. So we'll go ahead and stick with these for now. Now the next thing you need to do, because as you heard me mention before, Mythic uses a lot of Docker under the hood to do pretty much everything. So I've created two basic install scripts for whether you are doing this on Debian or Ubuntu. So you can see these here. So we'll go ahead and do uh, install Docker Ubuntu. So I'll go ahead and go through and make sure that not only is Docker installed, but Docker Compose. We'll use these two things to kind of orchestrate how all the different containers get stood up whenever you start, stop, or do anything with Mythic. All right, now we have Docker and Docker Compose installed. So the next thing that you need to do, since we've already looked at the configuration, is just to start Mythic itself. So that's as easy as doing sudo dat slash start Mythic. And what this will do, uh, I'll, it gives out status for everything that's going on. And if we scroll up here, we can see we don't have the SSL keys by default, so it creates them. It tries to stop everything that exists if it does and then start everything. So you don't have to necessarily stop Mythic and then start Mythic. If you need to make a change, you can just call start again. It will try and stop everything first. 
Mythic uses Docker containers for everything going on, and every Docker container is a kind of static Docker container. So they all contain just one step where it's from some other container. And these are all containers I have hosted up on Docker Hub under It's a Feature Mythic, and all of them should make it pretty fast to build and pull them down. They share most of their layers between all the containers, so you shouldn't eat up too much space going through and doing all this. To save on time, I went ahead and already pulled all these containers down, so we're just building them right here. So you can see you'll get output for each of these different containers, Atfel, Atlas, uh, the WebSocket container. It'll loop through all of them and build them. And the last thing it'll do is it'll look and try and hit the mythic web server on whatever you specified. So it'll try and actually hit the you know HTTPS with 7443, connect, and then it gives you a couple helpful things that you can do here. So one thing that's helpful to do as you go through troubleshooting is maybe something went wrong or maybe you try and connect up and things don't look quite okay. Um, the nice thing you can do here is do a status check. So status check will go through and for all the different Docker containers, give a little uh, piece of information and check and see if they're actually up. So you can see here, we have these uh, server, RabbitMQ, and Postgres. These are kind of the main default ones that are handled by Docker Compose. And then you have all the different C2 profiles and payload types. The reason these are separated is because these are required for Mythic to run. All the different C2 profiles and payload types are plug and playable. So you don't have to have any specific one of them. So we can see here that these are all up and going. They've been up about a minute, running for about a minute. If there's an error here, you'll typically see that it died within 30 seconds. Or for these ones up here, if there's an issue with the uh, um, Mythic, RabbitMQ, or Postgres containers, they are set to restart on failure. So you'll see them repeatedly restart within 30 seconds over here. So it's a clear sign that something is going wrong. The most common issue is that something is already bound to one of the ports that these need, but there's already a check up here in Mythic before starting this build process, before starting this deploy, to check for these default RabbitMQ and Postgres ports and see if they're already bound or not. So you can go ahead and see this here that they're up and going. Since we see that everything kind of looks like it's in good status, next thing we can do is actually try and hit the web server ourselves. So we'll launch Chrome go to our web server. We said that was HTTPS. We're just running it on localhost here, 7443. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice here is you'll get this connection is not private thing. This is Chrome freaking out that we're using a self-signed cert. They've kind of locked down a lot of things lately. So just click anywhere in the white area and type, this is unsafe, no spaces. And you'll see Chrome automatically redirect you back to your actual page. This isn't a one-time set forever type thing. Periodically, Chrome will you know, uh, make you reprompt for this again. And this could be at any time during your operation. So Mythic will go ahead and if it, if it notices that this issue is happening again, it'll give you a pop-up here in the top right that says that there is likely an issue. If you refresh the page, you'll see that, that warning from Chrome again, and then you can just go past it. So we said before in our configuration that our default admin is mythic admin and our default password is mythic password. So go ahead and type that in here, mythic admin, mythic password. All right, so that works. So everything is kind of getting set up. We can see here we are mythic admin. We can see the version that we're on here, which is 2.1.3. If you have questions about how to go about doing things in mythic, there's a little quick start guide here of a couple of steps of how to go through, create your payload, get your callback. There's information here on if you need the local documentation container. There is public documentation here at docs.mythicsd2.net. Click here and pull this up. And this also has a lot of information on Mythic, installation, troubleshooting, um, information about containers, how to update. All this sort of information is here, along with some frequently asked questions, what's coming up for the next release. All this sort of information is here located for you. So this is where we'll go ahead and stop this first video, just getting it installed and making sure you're able to connect up.